So this is part two of how to draw maximum and minimum slopes using Excel. And uh, this is the point which we reached last time. We have the uh, data plotted and we had decided the uncertainties in the velocity. That's the y-axis would be plus or minus 15 percent and in the x-axis time it's too small to plot. And the IB are quite happy with you just considering the uncertainties in one axis. So we need to plot error bars representing plus or minus 15 percent on just the y-axis. So I'm first going to collect, click on um, one of the data points and all the data points are highlighted, the series is highlighted and I'm going to control click on a data point and I'm going to format the data series. And you see we have lots of different options for formatting but the one I want is error bars and I'm interested in Y error bars. Y error bars, I want both up and down, I want plus and minus, and I want a percentage value, and I want my percentage value to be 15, which I can type in or just click up like that. So I'm going to hit OK, see what that looks like. So there we are, that looks pretty reasonable. Um, no need to consider the, the X error bars at this point. I'm just going to go back and format that again because I notice there's no end cap on my error bars, and I want to put a little end cap on there. So I'm going to go back again, select the series, control click, format data series, Y error bars, both, this is what I forgot to check, cap, check the cap there, and hit OK, and that looks, looks better. So now what I want to do is I want to put a maximum and minimum slope on uh, this graph. Now, we can see that at the steepest possible slope will run from the bottom from the lowest point uh, on this error bar here up to the top of this error bar here. That's the maximum possible slope. And again, the IB are quite happy with you just considering the first and last data points, the first and last error bars for this exercise. So the steepest line will run from the bottom of this data point to the top of this data point. Uh, likewise, the a shallowest gradient will run from the top of this error bar to the bottom of this error bar. So what I need to do is I need to generate uh, two small data tables that allow me to plot two new uh, lines, two new trend lines uh, on this graph. So let's deal with a maximum slope first. I'm just going to type in max slope here and we've got the two values, we've got time and we've got velocity. So we're considering the maximum slope and this is the first data point here. The time, there's no uncertainty in the time, the time value, the first time value is 0 0.01. The velocity value, we want the lowest part here, so the velocity value minus the uncertainty the velocity value minus the uncertainty. So the velocity value at that point, I'm just going to move this graph out of the way so I can see my velocity information, was 110. So I want to know what 15% of 110 is, and I'm going to subtract that from 110, and that is the bottom here of that error bar. So 15% of 110 is 16.5, so 110 minus 16.5 is 93.5 so I'm going to type in 93.5 into that cell there so that's the data that's the point the bottom of that error bar right over there now going up to the other side I want this point the top of this error bar here again time no change 0 0.1 is that time there and 0 0.1 we've got 200 centimeters per second plus 15 percent so 200 plus 15 percent so I can do that on my calculator 200 times 1.15 should give me the answer I want is 230 230 so those two new data points will give me the maximum uh, slope so let's add those in I'm going to pull the pull the graph over again a little bit uh, we want to control click on the uh, graph somewhere 
so that we can select the data. We're going to select some new data here. We're going to add a new series, series 2 it's called itself. And I'm going to call this max slope. Seems reasonable. Now the x value, let's move this box across a bit. The x value is time and the y value is velocity. So x value, click and drag to select those two data points. Y values, I'm going to highlight what's in there, delete it, and go down and select my Y values. I'm going to hit OK, and there they are, they're plotted. Now I'm going to repeat that for the minimum slope now. So I'm going to type in min slope, time and velocity. For the minimum slope, it's this point here and this point here. So the times are the same, I've just put those in. The velocities will be different. Now we want to add 15% to our velocity for the first data point, which was 110. So we want to add 15% to 110. So on my calculator, 110 times 1.15 and that will give me 126.5 and here the last data point I want to subtract 15 percent from my last data point which is 200 centimeters per second so I can see straight away that's going to give me 170 so those are my new data points so again I'm going to add that to my graph control click select data, add a next another series, call that min slope, whoops, min slope, x values, to move that so I can see them, x values are here, and y values, delete what's in there, y values, and we're okay. So now we can see those two data points have appeared as well. So we've now got the, the uh, maximum slope and the minimum slope. All I need to do now is plot the trend lines and then we'll be able to see those slopes. So control click on that data point, add trend line, linear, options, display equation on chart, OK. There's the equation. Let's do the minimum slope, control click, add trend line, type linear is the default options display equation on the chart, OK, and there we've got our equation for minimum slope and the equation for maximum slope and we've got our trend lines there. What we need to do as well is we need to go back and format the original trend line so we can see the equation of that one too. So now we've got three equations there. I'm going to move these equations down a bit so I can see what's going on here all next to each other so I can compare them easily and there they all are so y equals mx plus c the intercept is not an important uh, value in this case but the slope obviously is an important value we have a velocity time graph so the slope is the acceleration in this case we have our best fit line giving a value which is not unreasonable of 993, 994 centimeters per second squared, um, 9.81 meters per second squared, 981, so that seems pretty good. Um, our error bars have given us uh, quite a huge range of uh, values here from 483 to 1500. It seems that maybe our error bars are actually uh, too large compared to our data but nonetheless that's what we've got so from this data we can quote an uncertainty in the uh, value for acceleration now before I copy this across into Word I'm going to get rid of some of these uh, legends here because we don't really need all of these there we go also what I can do is I can change the uh, I 
can change the what the graph looks like. I'm going to put some other uh, lines in there so that uh, it looks more like a proper graph paper. So I've highlighted the uh, the the x-axis here and it's saying add major and add minor grid lines. I'm going to do both of those things. Oops. Let's click to highlight the numbers and then I'm going to control click, control click on a number and I'm going to add minor grid lines there as well. Up here select the numbers and then right click on a number so I can add the minor grid lines. So there we are. And we can format them um, however we want really. So let's copy that now across to Word and see what that looks like. So Command C and Command V. There we are. I'm going to stretch that out a little so it's bigger. Come on. There we go. So that's a little bit bigger there. Uh, and because I'm now in Word, I can add some titles and so on to the page. So graph of a velocity of falling ball uh, versus time. And underneath the graph I'm going to uh, draw the reader's attention to those three uh, values of slope, the max slope, min slope, and average slope, and say what they mean. So from the uh, trend lines of the slopes, uh, we can calculate an uncertainty for value of acceleration which is the slope of this graph. I'm going to shrink this chart a little bit so that I can squeeze that on the bottom. So I'm going to say I'm going to look at this and my average value is 993 plus or minus around about 500 so I think the best I can do from this data really is an answer of 1000 plus or minus shift alt plus plus or minus 500 centimeters per second squared superscript that. So that doesn't seem very precise. Uh, my average value is not too bad, but the error bars suggest that the uncertainty in the measurement is, is quite large. From here I would go into my conclusion and evaluation and I would discuss this value and ways in which I could reduce the uncertainty in this in this value to get a more uh, precise value.